Hi there, Joel from Jonesy's and Adventure Vehicles Northwest. We're kicking off another project. This is one I've been excited to uh, get going for quite some time now. It's a 49 Willys truck that we are putting a Cummins 4BT in. So stick around for the build details next. Here's what we're starting with. A client reached out to us and said he'd like to build a new farm truck and he has a 49 Willys pickup. So he dropped it off and we started to accumulate a whole bunch of parts. So let's kind of go through what we've got. We sourced a Cummins 4BT that uh, we completely rebuilt, freshened up, new high RPM valve springs, HX30W turbo. Uh, we also sourced a Tremec TR4050 as well as an Atlas transfer case. So as you can tell, this rig is kind of checking all the boxes and the goal here is to produce an actual legit usable heavy duty farm truck. So for the front axle, we sourced a Ford high pinion Dana 44 out of a 79 F250 eight lug. And for the rear axle, we are running a GM 14 bolt. Now, this rig right now in its current setup is just in very, very rough mock-up. And in doing so, we identified some, some issues. The first being that the bed itself that we could put, it's gonna have a flat bed on it that we'll custom make, is actually gonna to be too short to be usable as a legit farm rig. So in the back, this existing frame from the back of the cab to the end of the bed is only about five foot six. And the uh, client would like a fuel transfer tank mounted to the front so we can fill up farm implements with diesel and things like that. And so that's gonna use up probably a good 18 inches of the front of that bed. So we really will only have about four feet of usable flatbed if we keep this current configuration. So after kind of going through all of those realizations, we have decided that this frame and our chassis is not gonna stay and we're gonna design and build him a new one out of rectangular tubing. So that's gonna basically be what this uh, first video in this series is gonna be about. It's gonna be about frame design, how we uh, do it and how it's actually gonna be manufactured. And in the next video, you'll actually get to hopefully see us uh, assemble and build that chassis. So let's go through some of the other kind of details um, we are going to put a 8274 Warren winch on the front. And in order to do that, these front frame rails need to be lengthened. Hence, the other reason why we wanted to actually build a new, a new chassis. We have these axles mocked up in here with just some very temporary U-bolts to kind of hold things together so that we can get an idea of ride height as well as kind of configuration of how we want everything to be uh, positioned is we have rough engine placement, we have rough transmission, cross member placement, as well as kind of overall dimensions of axle center lines and things like that. So we've taken some notes and next step is going to be to pull the hood. So the hood will go, the front clip will go, the cab will come off, the engine transmission will come out, and we will strip it all the way down to the bare frame so that we can measure out and figure out exactly where our body mounts as well as our front grill mount uh, need to be positioned on the new chassis. So let's get to it.
frame is on the table. Uh, the table is completely level. We leveled that with a laser level. And now we have the old frame adjusted and leveled up in both directions, meaning forward to back, it's level. That's what you see there. And then we also have it leveled side to side within reason. You're never gonna get it exactly perfect, but we have it pretty darn close. And on situations like this, these frames are not perfect by any stretch, meaning we do have some wobble because this top of this frame rail is not perfectly flat. We're able to dial this stuff in really precisely because number one, our fixture table is laser cut and it's really square. And then also these uh, inexpensive RV jacks allow um, adjustability side to side as well as front to back. So we can really, we can get this thing really dialed in there. You can see it's kind of fluctuating from zero, zero to 0 0.1. Um, the rear section, we have to square everything up based off of side to side on the table. And so we've dropped a plumb bob right there on the outside of the frame rail lined up with the rear uh, shackle mount. And we did the same thing on this side as well, the driver's side. And we just measure off of the edge of the table to the center line of the plumb bob. Now for the front, we uh, did very similar, but I dropped it from the, I dropped the plumb bob from the front grill mount. So we just have that lined up um, on the center line of that hole and it drops down to the uh, center of the table. Now this line here is not perfectly accurate. I just used this string line uh, to kind of rough in. You can kind of see we just centered it up on some of our assembly marks on the fixture table to get a rough idea so that we can make sure that the frame is centered this way and this way, up and down, as well as this way and this way. So it is as square as it needs to be for what we're trying to do. And what we are gonna be doing next is dropping a plumb bob from the front axle center line. And that is basically where everything is going to be referenced off of in terms of front to back placement. So from the axle center line, we will then be able to position the front shackle mount, or I should say front spring mount, rear spring mount, transmission cross member, front of the rear spring mount, the front of the flatbed, which we made some rough marks on the frame in terms of position of where the firewall plane is. So this is where the cab firewall plane is. And then in the back here, we just have some basic Sharpie marks to where this is where the cab, the rear of the cab is. And then this is where the flatbed is going to start. And once we do the math on that, we'll be able to set our rear axle center line based off of our wheelbase. So hopefully that kind of makes sense to you guys in terms of how we're gonna lay this thing out. But the most important stuff right now is front axle center line and then the position of all of these cab mounts. So that cab mount, that cab mount, and the final cab mount, as well as the front grill mount right there. Now, once we have those all of those critical positions laid out. <clears throat> what we're gonna do after that is we have to establish a height of every single one of those based off of a datum. And so our datum point is gonna be this flat section of frame rail, which is right directly under the cab. So let me go ahead and we'll drop some plumb bobs and get this thing measured out and then we'll go from there.
Here's some details. I'm lining up on the, hopefully it'll focus, on the inside of the hole for the second cab mount. And it just barely makes it onto the table like so. And what we have done or what I've done is just made some notes here. This cab mount, the very first one, I measured on the outside of the hole. So the string came up right there and I dropped it down and it landed somewhere in here. And <clears throat> it is 53 and 5 sixteenths or about 3 eighths. And I just made some notes that it is measured to the outside of the hole. So after he spent a bunch of time in CAD and designed the uh, frame profile, I uh, drew DXF files for the, um, we're going to call them pie cuts for the two different frame rails. And here you can see how we um, program the plasma table to just cut um, little triangles out of each side of the frame. Um, we have to actually kind of like force start uh, with that little piece of metal on the plasma so that uh, the torch height control can work effectively. And then um, we cut the end off right here. This is just a straight cut. And here you can see what we're going for where you bend the two pieces together after you take out the little triangle. And then you can see how each one of those pie cuts makes a whole frame section. This is the two frame sections lined up right on top of each other and I'm just looking down through the holes to make sure they are exactly symmetrical with one another. And then this gives you a really good uh, shot of how um, the tube is cut on three sides and we bend and then tack weld together. Well, we're kind of at the moment of truth. I've got some of the Angles all welded out to kind of stiffen everything up and we've also fabricated and installed all of the body mounts and so now the next step is to lift up the body itself and test fit it on our mounts and if I did all the math correctly everything should line right up and have no issues. First test fit of the cab is great. Things are fitting really well. I'm very happy with how everything is lined up with the cab mounts themselves. And we have excellent clearance around everything with just the one inch body mounts. So that's great. I think we're good to go there. So next step is gonna be pull the cab off get the actual chassis down onto some stands so that we can fit this guy, the 4BT TR4050 engine in there, build the original or build the correct mounts for it, build the transmission cross member, and then test fit that cab one more time. So anyway, I think that's gonna wrap up this video. I want to say thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the subscribe button and the like, and we will see you on the next one.